Yes, sir, man. Beautiful background, man. What's going on? What are you? I'm your friend! <clears throat> it's about that time, y'all. This is the one game I wanted to get to. Sound ninja in this bitch. Yes, sir. Classic, bro. I can't wait till we get to the picture frame part with Team 7 in it, bro. Choji slamming Jerobo into the wall was personal. <laughs> I love this part of the opening, bro. The little picture frame, bro. This part was good, bro. Naruto! Sasuke! That shit had me going, bro. <laughs> the voice acting in Ultimate Ninja 3 was top tier. So much better than the Storm one, bro. Like, fight me on that. <laughs> Basically, Budokai Tekaichi 3. I'm going to do a new game. And better than Ultimate, better than um, Budokai Tekaichi 3. That's for sure, man. Ultimate contest I'll do after I finish the rest of the Ultimate Ninja games again. Because going all out, man, with the classics. I'm going to finish them all again, bro. So, Naruto AU6 no hajimari ja. 12 years ago. It's like, no, it's not. Mukoshi, Yoko Arike, Sono Kitsune. Bro, you know I was sitting there listening to it too, bro. It's a vibe. I'm not sure. I think Itachi probably plays the same. I can't remember. I would say they nerfed him more in probably 4 and 5. Four 
Slopping his ass, bro, and running off. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be the Joni, um... You know, it's supposed to be like the Joni version of Minato, I think. Oh, that's right, you told me that too. Then again, the man was supposed to be foreshadowed until Shippuden. Yeah, he shouldn't. And if um if Ultimate Ninja four and five would have probably went farther, then if Ultimate Ninja four and five had probably went farther, we would have gotten a pain as a playable character, or even or even what you call it. And me not to his voices, that is. Finally get to hear my favorite soundtracks playing, bro. And Sakura got the long hair, bro. That's good. Yeah, it covers up all the way from the beginning to Sasuke Retrieval Arc. Remember how I said I liked Heat the Soul 6? And the reason why I liked Bleach Heat the Soul 6? It's because that literally gets you up to speed with everything. Those are the type of games I like, where where they literally where they literally cover up everything, unlike the previous games that they do for certain Naruto, Bleach games, and stuff like that. These are the kind of games that get us up to speed where we're supposed to be at. Like Ultimate Ninja 2, Ultimate Ninja literally just continued off and started off with like tuning exams. Up to Tsunade search arc. Only because of the fact that Ultimate Ninja 1. Ultimate Ninja 1 didn't really cover much to be honest. They covered what if battles. But they did have Zabuza and Haku. And they covered up a bit of Land of Waves. So that counts a bit. But I still wanted Ultimate Ninja 1 to have an official story though. Yeah it is definitely more complete than Storm 1. Storm 1 did not carry up. Did not even like carry shit or anything throughout the series. And we didn't even get a land of waves either. Ultimate Ninja did something Storm could not do, and that's literally cover up Naruto a bit better in the earlier days. We had land of waves covered and everything, but Storm 1 could not even give us Zabuza and Haku by the time. But Clash of Ninja and Ultimate Ninja did something Storm could not do. I mean, how do you forget about Zabuza and Haku? And they even got the button showing too, bro. They even got the button showing in the, when you're in the air with them, bro. That's good. Finally. That's why I love three. But Storm never did. That's true, though. Storm literally just gave the characters their later, their later designs. Yet you can give us... Yet you can give us everyone else's costumes and stuff, but not change up certain styles of them. Wow. Feel bad for Sakura and Eno there. Goku.
Nine Tail Fox. We in the land of waves now. Says Sasuke, why? Why did you protect me? It does make weird choices, but it followed on through the Naruto story to the very end, and that's and that's the best respect I can honestly give it. It's the only Naruto game that covers Naruto until the very end. But has there been a single Dragon Ball game that covered up Super all the way until the very end? And don't mention Xenoverse. Xenoverse don't even count. Those are just future battles and stuff like that with with like time traveler characters and shit. That's what I did like about Storm. The Jutsu clashes and all that stuff. Those were good. And I like the way they brought it back in Storm 4. Too bad it couldn't be used in battles in general, but... But the well, the clash, the jutsu clash, weren't really brought back, but the wall wall fighting was only in the final battle battle with Naruto and Sasuke. This is the first version of that soundtrack too, and I think the second version of the soundtrack pops up with Naruto and Sasuke. Oh yeah, we're gonna get that cutscene where Naruto goes Nine Tails too. They're so stupid for that. I hated that. They had like a picture of it too, bro, in the Hidden Leaf Village. You know how many games literally literally showed screenshots and stuff like that? You know how they literally showed screenshots and stuff like that for, for certain things that were supposed to be on um that were supposed to be in the game but they never did it. Yet they only show it in the trailer. That was so stupid. Remember how Kingdom Hearts literally teased us into thinking we were gonna get Disney World as a as a playable um world and stuff like that? And it was only just the trailer only, and they just literally took it out? <laughs> Kingdom Hearts did that shit. Oh yeah, this song they later on brought back in Storm. <laughs> Molly whopped his ass in the air. Seriously, Disney Road and, and Kingdom Hearts 1, that would have been so perfect to do. People can mod it, though, in if they want to, though, but it probably wouldn't be the same, though. There's this YouTuber called the 14th Vessel, I think, 13th Vessel or 14th Vessel, and he does Kingdom Hearts videos, Kingdom Hearts modded videos where, um, where you can put Sora in different levels or put any of the characters in different levels. I recommend that Kingdom Hearts YouTuber. He is perfect. They made Shibuya a playable, they made Shibuya like a, a playable world where you can actually go through, um, where you can actually go on the streets and everything like that, explore the streets and stuff instead of just fighting up top against, uh, Yozura. Come to think of it, Karama did cry once too. 
with the Sage of the Six Pats, if I remember correctly. Oh yeah, I saw that video too. I saw that video too, that's the funny thing. I think it was supposed to be an animation video. It's supposed to be an animation video they did. Kingdom Hearts 4 might take a long, 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 long while. Probably probably longer than 3. I don't want to say so, but probably longer than 3. Everybody was waiting for 3 for a very for, for many years, for a very long time. Everybody was waiting for 3, like, since I was back in high school, bro. <laughs> With the amount of worlds that they're probably going to add in four, most likely. Oh yeah, we got the sword too, that's right. Marvel Avengers? Oh, yo, that might happen. That could actually happen. Pretty much done with a. Uh, we're almost there, too. Yeah, I, I think they did. I think it's just one alt now. Cause I tried, cause I tried doing the jutsu again with a second leveled um alt, and it did the same one. Not sure. Come to think of it, Miraculous Ladybug is getting a new game too. I'm thinking they removed it probably because of the fact that uh, with the amount of new characters that they added on and stuff, they would probably have to... Uh, they would probably have to put in more continuous juices for them too. Because remember that we have Hanabi, we have Hinata's sister Hanabi as a playable character, I think, yeah. Hanabi, right? Hanabi is playable. Hanabi's playable, and I think in the Japanese version of 3, there's also that dude from the Naruto movie, I think, or, or am I probably confusing it with 2 or 1? And Hayashi is playable too, Hayashi, uh, Anko. Delta Kazahana, that's his name, right? The one from the from the movie. That's a little dude that almost looked like Conqueror or something, because he had a he had a I don't know he had an outfit similar to Conqueror's, I think. Matter of fact, all of the enemies from the Naruto Ninja Clash and Land of Snow movie almost looked like Conqueror. Well, not look like Conqueror. They had an outfit similar to his. Alright, so that's the end of Genin training arc. Well, couldn't can't really call it Genin training arc when you when you put land of, um land of waves on there too, but they made the covers badass too. The Sasuke retrieval arc cover was even more better. Alright, so now we started off at the tuning exams in the forest of death. I think they skipped prelims though. Prelims was skipped. 
and we went on to the finals. That's what Ultimate Ninja 2 did. They skipped the prelims and skipped Land of Waves and shit. And Genin Training Arc and literally pop on to uh, finals. <laughs> you know something? I think the animation changed when Anko faced off against Orochimaru. Like, you know, there's like some episodes where the animation is different. I know that would be by a different animator most of the times, but like there were some episodes when the animation was different. Like when Anko faced off against Orochimaru and shit. Possibly. I mean, they had Final Fantasy characters, meaning we had Yuffie, Arieth, Leon, well, Squall. Squall, I think, was his original name, so pro possibly. Because, I mean, the only time we saw them again, the only time we saw, and Yuffie was hot. I don't care what he say. <laughs> oh, yeah, we had Tifa, too. Um, Tifa was in, um, Tifa was in, um, what you call it? Kingdom Hearts 2. Number 2, that is. Oh, yeah, Cloud and Sephiroth, too. Yeah, her design in, in 1 was amazing. I liked seeing her again back in 3 when they, um, when they released the Remind DLC. I think... Remind DLC was when we saw them again, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and they looked and they looked all like and, and they literally were all in Kingdom Hearts 3 graphics, bro. And they look very good. And like throughout the games and stuff, we get different versions of them too. Cause they cause when Sora gets different versions and everyone, they also give the Final Fantasy characters different versions too. Cause they're going based off of what they looked like in the previous games and stuff up until now. Cause when Kingdom Hearts was releasing games, Final Fantasy was releasing games too at the same time when you think about it. <laughs> I'm trying to see if there's characters we don't see anymore. Zack from Crisis Core? Oh my god. Should have brought you should have brought Zack back, bro. Oh my god, dude. 
we see him in um we, we also see him in birth by sleep bring him back bring him back <laughs> See that? Look how they give us all the characters unlocked because of the fact that no tuning exam prelims are in the game. That's why. So they give us all the characters. All the characters because of the fact that there's no tuning exam prelims are. We skip straight on to the finals, bro. Look at that. On to the finals. Oh yeah, we get to hear one of my we get to hear other one of my other favorite uh soundtracks too. Neji's theme. Well, technically, is he not the theme? But this is Neji's theme version. Chaldon, yo, bring back everyone, bro. He's one of the other organization members, right? Yes, bring him back too. True, Chris, you're definitely right there. And I was disappointed with three. <laughs> Redeem the Rochimaru? What, like make him a good guy and stuff? Bring Zigbar back? Ooh, Zigbar, yes! Zigbar, Marluxia, um, pretty much all organization. I know we got Axel. Axel's no longer part of the organization, though. He's with the Keyblade wielders now. He's with Sora and them now, because he awakened his own Keyblade. So Axel's with them now, so Axel's fine. And I know we got Roxas and Shion back, too. Does anybody give a fuck about Xehanort anymore, or like what? And what about Master Ericus? Sykes? Uh, yeah, definitely. He should come back too. Everybody, well, for one thing, everybody hated the ending for Kingdom Hearts 3. Everybody was disappointed with 3's ending because of the fact that all the characters literally come back alive afterwards and stuff. Because, like, think about it. Shion died. Shion died because on what you call it. She was beaten by Roxas. It's my favorite theme, bro. Shion died and she was beaten by Roxas if you played the final boss battle in, um, in 358 by 2 days. Axel was, was, uh, he was supposed to have died, uh, what you call it. He was supposed to have died when, what you call it, uh, remember when he fought against all those Heartless and stuff, and he used up all of his power and shit, and he laid on the ground afterwards? He opened up the portal for Sora, and Sora went through? Axel was supposed to have died, too. Well, on the PS3, 358 by 2 days, um, when it re-released, was not um, a playable game. It was more of a cutscenes only kind of game. But you can play the final battle. You can actually play the final battle on the DS itself. Because half those Kingdom Hearts games they brought back were literally just cutscenes only. Especially re-encoded. I think the only thing that would change in that battle was probably the fact that it was remastered and people and 
and they still have a chance. They still have a chance to literally put re-encoded in 358 by two days playable. They're just, Square Enix is just lazy. That's the thing. With the development going on with 4, I doubt they're going to have time to give us remasters for other games that we need. I mean, yeah, I love the fact Birth by, um, my bad, not Birth by Sleep, uh, Dream Drop Distance was playable. But, like, I'm pissed over the fact that they missed out on other games that were, you know, that really had a bigger chance. That could really open up the fans' eyes and shit. 358 by two days holds a heart. Holds a, um, a special place in everybody's heart. Reencoded? I'm not really sure much people cared about reencoded. I mean, it being on the DS and all that stuff, bro, it could have been um playable too. It would be so good if it could be um remastered. Remastered and remake too. Yeah, they brought a lot of characters back in 3. A lot of characters that should have already been dead, to be honest. And that's only because of the fact that Kingdom Hearts isn't really, you know, Kingdom Hearts isn't meant to kill off every character and stuff like that. It's supposed to be a soft-hearted series that can, you know, make you cry and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, it's it's supposed to be like a fun series about friendship and all that stuff and saving the worlds and everything like that. Whoever gets dropped down first is getting out of here. Ooh, you are. <laughs> Bro, the funny thing is, you know, I was also in the middle of 358 by two days, like a while back, like four years ago when I was emulating it. I stopped somewhere where I was, uh, who was I, who was I searching for clues with? Who was it? Was it Marluxia, maybe? I can't remember, but. Oh, survive. <laughs> Remember, uh, Ienzo? Who did Ienzo used to be? What was Ienzo's real name? Uh, his code name? His organization name? Zexion, there you go. He's no longer a bad guy. And he was um he was also he was also one of the six apprentices of Ansem. That guy's no longer a bad guy either. We saw him back when he was young in Birth by Sleep. That's where he was introduced in too. Lexia should come back. Bro, yes. Oh my god, Lexia is yes. Bro, we ain't seen that dude in a minute, bro. Like. And that weapon, that little axe he had too, was. Oh my god, bro. I know we had Larxene in three as well, but bring Larxene back too. Practically the only female member in Organization 13, bro. <laughs> Shit is crazy. Claymore? It's a massive Sky Splitter axe sword, though. That's what the wiki says, too. Loki, I searched up what his weapon is. It's literally a sky splitting axe sword. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Because that shit, like, that shit literally has the control of Earth on it. Vanitas? Vanitas could come back too. I don't, honestly, I don't even think there would be any room for Vanitas these days. I think he was more like a birth by sleep, um, birth by sleep bad guy only. Data Sor and Data Riku. You know, that actually might work. That actually might work. Those are the ones from, uh, Reencoded, right? From Reencoded? Yeah. Bring them back too. Dude, you all, you, you know Riku in the, in the organization outfit, bro, has the best drip. That's my favorite version of Riku too. Like, I know it's like, I know it's like, you know, Kingdom Hearts 1 Riku in the organization outfit. I also like the long haired one. One of the ghosts of Chain of Memories. Mm. Hold on. It's it's at the tip of my tongue. It's at the tip of my tongue. Hold on. Hold on. He got pink hair. He got pink hair. He popped out the scythe. Mm. And they brought him back in three, two. Marluxia. Yes, sir. Marluxia. Low key, though, I kind of like that scythe weapon, though. <laughs> Who the dude that played the cards, though? Who the one that gave us that one card game, though? Not chain of memories though. I forgot. I forgot the boss. I hated that little I hated that card game. It was trash. Luxor, that's the one. The one the one we fought against in um in two. Little dude with the goatee, man, and little and the, and the little earrings and shit, bro. That was an annoying fight, bro. Oh yeah, Sasuke wear the black outfit at this point too. Oh yeah, this way this way uses uh, at least a little bit of the nine tails chakra. The fact that he was able to do it at this age, bro, was just good. And he used the chief toad. He used the chief toad and, and used the transformation jutsu. And transform the chief toad into the nine-tailed fox, bro. That was such a genius idea, bro. Xehanort? I don't think anybody wants Xehanort back, to be honest. He served his purpose as a villain. There would really be no point for him coming back. Maybe to aid Sora and them in four, possibly, but there's really no point in him coming back. <laughs> You know, they should have added the Chief Toad with the Nine Tails um transformation jutsu. Why they had the perfect chance to do that too. Shakaku's supposed to be a possum. Why? 
If you think he's cute when you look at little Shikaku and bored, so uh, you know. Shikaku shrunk afterwards in Boruto later on. And I think Himawari holds him or something. When y'all, when you, I swear, when y'all told me that Himawari becomes, like, literally becomes a Jinchuriki, bro. I asked myself, what type of shit is Boruto on right now? But no Naruto and Shikaku battle in hero mode? Are you serious? I played through the story, but I never paid attention to that. That's crazy. Gara, Konkuro, Tamari, give it to us all. Search for Tsunade art. Roxas should be in the organization or no more. To be honest, the organization the organization is no more, to be honest, so they don't really need to wear those outfits anymore. I mean, Axel still chooses to wear his. Roxas, on the other hand, I guess he still wears his too, and Shion. Actually, Shion wears plain clothes now. She don't even need the organization outfit. But when four drops, I'm not really sure if they'll still wear those outfits though. They're drip. So it should be good to it should be good to wear them. But I'm just saying that the organization is no more with Xehanort's defeat. So it's like what's the point of them wearing it anymore? It's pure drip. I get that. But like would they still wear it though is the question? Axel, you know he's still going to wear his. And Roxas, from what I remember, Roxas had plain clothes back when he was in that little Twilight Town. That other world, um, that other Twilight Town world that, um, that Riku and them kept him in. So I'm like, Sh but I still think they should wear the organization trip, even if the organization is no more. Because Xehanort is done for, Xehanort's young form is done for. Zemnis is Zemnis is done. If I remember correctly, Zemnis is Xehanort's young um younger form. So yeah. Um And we don't really gotta talk about Ansem because Ansem was a <clears throat> Ansem was just Ansem. <laughs> Ansem is Diz. <laughs> But with all of Xehanor beaten and all that stuff, there's really no like, with all... Pretty much over at that point. Uh. 
True, but it doesn't change the fact that Sora and uh, Donald and Goofy beat Ansem, though. Yeah, Xehanor was definitely like the motto of Kingdom Hearts, for sure. And that dude had the ultimate keyblade, bro. Like like how Madara literally got like how Madara literally um became the sage of the six paths and shit. Right, Fox. When he fought against Roxas and shit, and he literally um released the power of darkness, he ended up looking like him too. Because his regular strength alone wasn't enough to stop Roxas. In order to take him back by force, he literally had to use the power of darkness itself. What I will definitely say about Riku is that, um, <clears throat> the evil version of Riku. Is part of the um is part of the thirteen seekers of darkness. That would mainly be the replica Riku, from what I remember. Cause that wouldn't be the that wouldn't be the last time. That wouldn't be the last time we ever saw um the dark version of Riku. Cause they later on used the dark replica version of Riku as one of the thirteen seekers of darkness. It was Drip. As long as he didn't have Ansem's face on him. Oh, also, bring Namine back too. She's actually one of my favorite Kingdom Hearts waifu out of, ev out of every female. Mind y'all, I, I don't really give any fucks about Aqua. I hope, because y'all already know Aqua is a hated character, mind you. Just gonna put that out there. I, I think we all know why Aqua is a hated character. Yes, the two outfit was amazing, bro. Yes. She wore the school outfit too, man. That's a funny thing. Bro, you know what? You know what? Yo, selfie though. Selfie though. Selfie though. Selfie though. That just reminded me, selfie. When they was walking up to school and shit. Yo, you know what? That got me thinking. Remember in Kingdom Hearts 2? Remember in Kingdom Hearts 2 when Kyrie was walking with Selfie to, um, walking back from school with, a uh, Selfie? Did they even have a school next to Destiny Islands? Like, from what I've seen, Destiny Island was all the way... Destiny Islands was literally seconds away. No, no, minutes away 
minutes away from the neighborhood, bro. So it's like, how is that possible, though? Like, can you even explore that area, though? Like, you can explore Destiny Islands, of course, since the first one. I'm asking, like, what about the platform they was walking on before? That's one place we never, ever explored. Like, you, you notice that Destiny Islands, we never even got an extended area in Destiny Islands. If God could murk Madara, would he be able to murk Itachi? Well, let me put it like this. Remember that Kakashi has the Sharingan, and Guy has battled against the Sharingan many times in their years of rivalry. But then again, Itachi's Sharingan, on the other hand, should be on a much different level, though. Especially since he's the true successor to the Sharingan, and he has Shisui's eyes, too. And he's a genius. He's a genius and one of the most highest students back at the Ninja Academy. Kind of like Kakashi. They're both geniuses in a kind of way. So, guy against Itachi, I'm not really... It's possible, though. It is possible. Guy's Taijutsu is one of the strongest around. Uchiha Itachi. Nah, Loki though, if Kakashi, no, no, if Guy can pop up the gate of death, there's probably a chance he would murk Itachi, I'm just gonna say. Itachi. Storm don't have this type of Storm don't have this level of cutscenes anymore, sadly, bro. Let's be honest. You only see this type of stuff happen in boss battles in Storm. Come on. And think about it for a sec. One didn't really have much boss battles. Storm one did not even have much boss battles either. Naruto versus Gamabunta. They should have made the survival training arc have a boss battle. If they had Land of Waves arc, that would have been a boss battle too. Yeah, that's right, it was. I, I never understood that for some reason. I never understood that. And, and Sasuke at least had the Chidori a bit mastered afterwards. Although I'm not really, I don't think the Chidori was fully complete though. I think his Chidori was fully complete when he um awakened the third eye Tomoe Sharingan. I kept asking myself that though. Why the hell was it? Why the hell was his skin peeling? Well, not the skin. I think it was his uh, arm pads, arm shoulders. His arm shoulders were the one that was uh. His arm shoulders were the one that were ripping off, I think. I think he was using the Chidori to its maximum capacity, too. You, you remember those little green, um, those little gray arm pads of his? Since he was wearing the black outfit? It was most likely those from what I remember. I didn't look clearly because of the lighting of the animation and stuff. Cause like you know you know how you watch certain anime online and shit like that and the lighting of the animation could really get us thinking the wrong idea
Oh, wait, hold up. It was in the manga. <laughs> it was in a manga. The manga had his um the manga had its skin peeling. And I think it was probably for the anime too. Yeah, for the uncut. Yeah. It was most likely for that too. <clears throat> and the first time we saw it during the um was actually during his battle with Gara, because he used the Jidori to its full full maximum capacity. He used it a he used it one last time against Gara. Also, it wasn't from uh, it wasn't from training stuff. It was actually from chakra control. It was due to chakra control, and it was mainly due to the fact that Sasuke's revenge was a lot strong. It was due to the amount of revenge that Sasuke was longing to give toward Itachi. Sasuke lost control while using the Chidori in order to push it through Itachi. He was pushing his chakra through the roofs for a much stronger Chidori. It was the same thing he used against Gara. <clears throat> Remember that Sasuke is an Avenger. He must destroy his prey. You know how characters say they they would they would die in order to achieve their dreams or goals or whichever like that that's sasuke he would be willing to die in order to get revenge no matter how it was done even if it meant pushing his chakra through the roofs Now, part of the markings could be from training, but skin ripping, that's thats definitely got to be from pushing your chakra through the roots. But with Sasuke older now, he pretty much has the best chakra control there is. Technically, he had chakra control since the very beginning. But seeing Itachi literally spurred up his hatred. Dude couldn't even control his chakra anymore. So in your crossover story, is Itachi still... Part of the Akatsuki then? Or maybe wearing the Anbu outfit? Attack on Titan got another movie confirmed, bro. Attack on Titan, the last movie, the last attack movie confirmed. Same day as Gundam Seed received the, um, another movie. Wow. Bet you it's a damn recap, bro.
All right, so now it's changed to Rasengan now. That's good. And we got Rasengan at this point. Hey. Probably was supposed to use that after, you know, before I got him near death. Oh no. Got you. Come on, come on. は。なぜ Very good. Sudane punching Orochimaru will never die for me. <laughs> oh 
Buddy, Oh, another one of my favorite soundtracks. Hold up. Oh yeah, she definitely did. She had a fully charged chakra punch right on Orochimaru. There's no telling the amount of pain that you, I will give you. Classic Itachi, he never jokes about anything. Yo, I miss Monda too, man. He got he got done so dirty, man. Then again, does can't Sasuke use other uh summoning jutsus too? Like the um the hawk? He popped out the hawk against Donzo. Itachi versus Orochimaru.
question. I'm trying to remember. Let's get the last arc over with. And Meditachi. That was when they was walking down the stairs and shit. Try all the jutsu you need. My eyes can see all of them. Unfortunately, you don't have enough. You possess far too much greed. Oh yeah, Broken Bond had it too. Broken Bond had like the, from what I remember with Broken Bond, they had the, they had the afternoon, they had the afternoon and night stages and afternoon and night atmosphere for, uh, afternoon and night weather for Broken Bond. Alright you guys, give me a sec. Sasuke Redemption watch them right in the mix. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, after the Chidori and Rasengan incident. When you charge up chakra, yo, I hate that a lot too, man. Like, oh my god. A wild on TikTok. Don't the person who played Ned have has like a what was he? He got, he got like a beard now, I think, or a goatee. I heard the cast came back together. Like, well, that was a couple years ago though. But the cast did like have a reunion and stuff. I kind of miss the series though. Cause like I grew up with that series, man. Like. They used to have Ned and Moe's being like a in like a um a relationship in the in in the series. And then Cookie was like the nerd and stuff like that. I like the dude that played basketball. That dude was that dude was good. Coconut head though on a on a on a on a different point. <laughs> Coconut head on a different point. <laughs> While she in the podcast. Damn man, that's how people be acting off stage, man. Still on T Nick, you remember correctly? Damn man, I got rid of my cable, but you know what I might do? I might just uh, check it up online and see if I can watch some episodes. Like I like the soundtracks and everything that played in in um in that declassified. Like I don't know how they came up with that show, but it was perfectly well written. But the dude that the dude that all that that was always spinning the basketball with one finger, that dude is my favorite, bro. The one who be wearing the green tracksuit and stuff. He was my favorite. Butterfly mode. All I gotta do is pop in the L. It should be it should be easy enough. And there was like this other character called Coconut Head, I think. And that dude, he actually, he, I know who he looks like now, bro. He looked like Armin from Attack on Titan. <laughs> That's who he looked like. <laughs> That's who he looked like. <laughs> He always made that face too. That little one face he made, bro, when he was scared and shit. <laughs> Somebody gotta pay that dude, bro. The, the the actor who the actor who played him, bro, he was perfect. Now, nah, who else had that same old arm and hairstyle up? Mako from Kill a Kill. Mako from Kill a Kill. She had that same hairstyle too. All right, let's get it. Choji versus Jirobo. Let's do it. Yo, what was that one Neddy Classified episode? The one where they had the school lunch and stuff, and the and the lunch was moving. <laughs> I saw that shit in the opening.
didn't get a reboot, but Spider-Man always get remade reboot. I would I would probably say because Spider-Man is just more popular. I feel like Ned Declassified was like a one-time thing. We're gonna pop out all the modes in this shit, bro. Byakugan mode. Oh no. Oh shit. Oh! No! 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 no. Get stomp. <laughs> Dude, they did Choji wrong in Storm, bro. And in Clash and Ninja, bro. What's going on to Mars? Bro, when I saw when I saw that they had a reunion and stuff like that, I really thought the series was gonna come back though. But then again, when you when you ask for reboots and stuff like that, or like, or like a new series, it probably isn't gonna be the same like it was back then. Like, like that's how it felt when they brought George Lopez back. When they brought George um Lopez back, George Lopez didn't feel the same when you watch it. Like, that's the same thing I felt with Fuller House when they brought Full House back. But like you know, with new shit on it stuff, it just did not feel right. Bro, she actually brought that up on a podcast, bro? Damn, bro. Why does that ruin my childhood for some reason? <laughs> bro, I forgot Sam was not in the new icon. Bro. Okay, now that kind of pissed me off too, man. When they didn't bring Sam in, bro. Jeanette McCurdy. When they didn't bring Jeanette McCurdy in, bro. I was so pissed, bro. But then again... Let's think about it for a sec. Remember what happened. Remember what happened with Jeanette McCurdy and how she had problems with her own mother, right? Remember that shit? And how her mother mainly used her for clout and all that stuff? Like, And we got parents out there who do that shit. Maybe the reason she didn't return to the cast that time, maybe she didn't, maybe the reason she didn't return to the cast that time was because of the fact that she was being used by her own, you know, mother for clout and all that stuff. And maybe going back into the acting career and stuff like that could have probably spurred up some memories, some painful memories and shit. I'm honestly, didn't, yeah, she wrote a book afterwards too. I'm like, I'm glad she left. I'm, I'm guessing she left the acting business now. She's no longer an actor and stuff like that. Okay. So she did retire then, okay. Cause she made a book and she, what did she put? She she put, I'm glad my mom is dead or something like that. That's what she said. I, I can't remember what it was like. So don't don't get me wrong. I'm no, I don't know how the title went. She just put, I'm glad my mom is dead or something like that or. Now the woman that popped into the that one episode where we got introduced to Sam's mom. That's the name of the book? Okay, okay. I, I about to say I was wilding for a sec. The the woman that was put in the iCarly episode where we get introduced to Sam's mom, was that her real mom? That was her real mom, right? Or that wasn't any random actor. That was her real mom, right?
That was not a real mom. Fake actor. I used to think that was her real mom for a sec. Like her real mom even off stage, but yeah. Which contributed, contributed to her not coming back. You know something? That's what happened with Family Matters and Fresh Prince. Her mom had darker hair. She wasn't wrinkled by the time, was she? Because the because the actor that played Sam's mom in iCarly was a, was a bit wrinkled and stuff, but. All right, Kido Maru. Love this soundtrack so much, bro. All right, Biakugan mode. This, Damaris, what you said literally reminded me of what happened in Family Matters and stuff. And how Jalil White was, uh, what you call it. Who was, who played Harry in, in uh, Family Matters? Because the person that played Harry in Family Matters, Jalil White had a, um, what you call it. I think they was having arguments with each other, or I'm probably thinking uh Will Smith and uh what's her name? Cause there are always gonna be problems with actors and stuff like that. There's always gonna be those problems with actors. You know, when it comes to casting like, you know, episodes and shit like that. Joe Marie Payton? That's the that's the one that Played Harriet or or um Vivian from Fresh Prince. Harry, okay. Jalil White and Jalil White and Joe actually had like an argument between each other and shit. And she almost left the cast because of it. And I think this was in Jalil's um, young days and stuff when he was just getting into playing Steve Urkel. I heard she almost left the cast because of that. It's because it's because Jalil was getting more popularity than um than Joe. Because when you're the main character, when you play the main character of a cast. Of a cast of um, when you play the main character of a series and stuff like that, and and you're like getting more popularity than the other characters and stuff like that, that would probably also mean that you know the director himself would probably just like, the director himself would literally just take off unpopular characters off. That's what they did with Judy for Family Matters. They they took Judy off the cast and stuff for certain reasons. I'm not I'm, <laughs> for certain reasons. Because the person that played Judy is actually, um, what was she, a porn star or something? Or someone who did OnlyFans? I don't remember. Apparently, they took her off the cast because of that. She went up the stairs and never came back. Never came down. <laughs> Drake Bell? Sexually assaulted by one of his mentors on Nickelodeon? Bro, I remember that shit. For, um, what was it? Sexual assault? Was that the grooming incident? Yeah. But didn't they, um... Yeah, and Jake was sentenced to like, what was it, like two years probation and stuff like that and 200 hours of community service? Oh, 
But wasn't the charges plead not guilty though? Hold on. I thought that shit was dropped though. Hold on. Like I saw news of that like months ago though. Like. It was like a two thousand five hundred dollar uh personal bond and stuff. Damn, bro. Still, though, man, my boy was done dirty, man. That's what happens when you're famous, bro. You'll be accused of certain things and other things could actually happen. And oh, man, this is the harsh realities of when it comes to being famous. Sakon and Ukon. You guys remember that movie Mean Creek? Everybody, most people should remember Mean Creek, especially remember, especially remember Josh Peck's days back in uh, back in acting back in the day. How did it go again? His daddy splattered his brains all over the wall. His daddy splattered his brains all over the wall. That was too far though, bro. That was too far. There was there was that one special scene though. The one scene that really changed my like changed my overall view of Josh back in the day. Like I, I say that because when you've seen Drake and Josh, in between Drake and Josh and have seen the Mean Creek movie, you think that like he's a different person in that one. Obviously it's acting, but like when you see him in between, bro. It, it got me thinking different things, bro. Like, he's like a dick. He's kind of like a, a little bit of like a bully or technically a supposed bully from how it was at the beginning of the movie. But, like, in Drake and Josh is like, you know, he's this other kind of dude. And he's smart and nice and stuff like that. But in Mean Creek, bro, he's recording his journey. He's recording his life journey and stuff like that. And it literally all starts with Josh just... Beating up on a kid, or hey, what's going on, Eisen? It literally just starts with Josh beating up on a kid because he supposedly took his camera, and then later on, he gets he, he starts all these other guys start being nice to him and stuff like that and want to give him a birthday present and stuff, but they end up driving him all the way to all the way to a lake, and while in the middle of a lake, they're literally. They're on, on a small boat, a dinghy or whichever, I don't know, but 
They're literally on this boat and stuff like that. And what they wanted to do was push him in the water and drown him. Well, make, well, actually, they wanted to strip him naked and push him into the water. And it was because the um the little kid's brother, a little kid's brother, wanted revenge and stuff for what for what Josh did to his brother. You know, after he after Josh literally, I think, beat him up or something for taking his camera. But instead, Josh ended up going past the limit. And he ended up bringing up the bully's dad. And he ended up saying all this. His daddy splattered his brains all over the wall. His daddy splattered his brains. He literally brought up something from the dude's past and shit because of what happened with his dad and shit. And that's when a bully got mad. Well, not the bully. I think it was the other guys that pushed him in. And he ended up drowning. They tried to hide it, but don't forget that he was also recording. So the cops would have gotten the evidence. The cops would have gotten the evidence of his death and stuff. That and the fact that um, there was blood in the water too. So, And the movie just ends there. The movie just ends with everybody owning up to what happened. Because they would still get caught either way, even if they didn't... Um, even if they got rid of the Evans. Don't worry, bro. It's not an anime. It's a movie. It was kind of horrible, though. But then again, Aizen, I mean, we, we were also talking about the story, you know, a little story of how Char was beating your ass in Smash. Oh, wait, never mind. That We weren't talking about that story. It's like, nah, bro, you know I'm joking. How are you? You did anything good, bro, like these last couple of hours? Diary of Wimpy Kid? Do they still make movies for Diary of Wimpy Kid or no? <clears throat> <laughs> Damn, I was about to be—I was about to be done dirty again. <laughs> the last Diary Wimpy Kid movie I ever saw was the one where um, was the one where Greg's brother was being nice to him and shit. That's the last movie I ever saw. Like his brother was actually being nice to him and they they ended up doing stuff together. After I'm done with the game, bro, I got a lot of I got a lot of, I got some Chinese to eat. Is that his name? That's Greg's brother's name? Remember the cheese touch, bro? Why did I remember the cheese touch, bro? Back in middle school, bro, we used to, when we watched The Diary of Wimpy Kid, like, when, when we watched certain movies and stuff on a Friday and stuff, with getting some pizza and shit, it used to be Diary of Wimpy Kid. I think I remember bringing in Sonic Underground and Pokemon the movie and shit, but we watched Diary of Wimpy Kid and stuff, and we used to always, every time we were in middle school and stuff like that, we, when we were outside on recess, we always did that whole cheese touch shit. I just tell you your look when she twerks, bro. You know, I've been kind of wanting to ask that, bro. Like, does she even have an ass? Probably not. 
She looked like she does, though. Cheese touch was literally like Cheese touch was like literally COVID back in the day. I remember when Jerobo literally um pushed to you your soft spot. Literally said, no one no wonder you couldn't get a boyfriend. <laughs> like, do the sound ninja even have time for all that shit? <laughs> Oh wait, that's my fault, but I'm stupid for that. Shadow Paralysis Jutsu. That's what it originally was called, but they changed it to Shadow Possession Jutsu later on. Oh yeah, in the thumbnail. I like it, man. But she's flat. To you, you is flat. Well, I gotta give props to one thing for Kishimoto. He doesn't focus too much on the fan service and stuff. Cause you know, it's not all the female characters are like you know. I mean, I mean, nowadays, certain animes you see, bro, literally have characters with big tits. Let's be honest. <laughs> bro, did you just... Okay. How do I keep forgetting? They also skip those fights too, bro. No Tamari versus Teyuya, of course. Come on, bro. Where the fuck was that? I know it was in here, bro. Damn. 
damn, they even have that fight. I, I keep forgetting, bro. No, 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 Tamari versus Tayuya. No freaking Conquero. Oh my god, versus Sako. Like, oh my god. And no Gar versus, you know, actually, nah. Of course, they put in hero mode, bro. Oh my god. That's when Orochimaru literally had all of his, all of his, uh, all of his prisoners literally fight each other so that one of them could be chosen to be his next vessel until, until the next, uh, until the next procedure. Probably, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe if the AI isn't too stubborn. <laughs> Perfect place. <laughs> Especially with that wind howling, bro. Yeah, low key though. And the soundtrack just fits it too. Sasuke right in there, bro. <laughs> Bro, get your ass up there. I'm not done with you yet. Oh, there you go. Go cook. They used to say go cook. Be like you pass, but in two though. I wonder how old Orochimaru would have looked if he hadn't um, used immortality though. <laughs> There's no other person for Orochimaru that understood the mission more than Kimimaru. <laughs> Pop and leave. There you go. I am the Leaf Village's handsome devil. Rock Lee. The animation in that fight between Lee and Kimimaro, bro, where Lee was popping out the, popping out the leg attacks and shit. Just 
still though. Lee got carried by Gara though. You know Lee could not miss this show, bro. Even if he did recently just get back after surgery and shit, bro. It's good that he's back in action, man. In the air the entire time. If I was evil, would I laugh like that? I would probably laugh more Japanese style than English. <laughs> Yo, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he kept spamming that shit, bro. Rem remember how the remember how the um the aiming the aiming of it? The aiming and all that shit for um Kimi Models Jutsu, bro? And you can literally just get them just like that. Like you don't even gotta move it. You just press A, bro, and that's it. that I hated that shit, bro. Even Orochi Model shit has that in Broken Bond. Bro, I was about to use my jutsu. Come on, dude. Really? There you go. There you go. Got it. My go, bitch. Get over here. Pop it in, baby. Loopy fish mode. Let's get that drunken fish, bitch. Drunkenly cooking. Yaruna <laughs> Dana. Fought while drunk. Okay, so remember when Luffy um he doesn't drink actually. Set Hold on. But what about the stuff that Luffy drinks? When he's at the bars and stuff like that, when they have a party and stuff. Maybe that's root beer or maybe... Na I know Nami drinks, but Luffy doesn't. I know Nami drinks and Zoro drinks, but, but Luffy doesn't. Booze? Mm. Maybe Luffy just doesn't get drunk, to be honest, because he's never gotten drunk in the series before. But Luffy, remember the old man Luffy saw at the bar? The one that saw Roger back in Long Town before he was executed and shit? The old man who never closed up his shop and stuff and, and Luffy Luffy and him um toasted to the eternal um Pirate King? Dude, that okay, let me just say that scene was good too. Let me just say that scene was good too, bro, because I wonder if the old man is still alive since then, bro. Okay, so when he was about to when he was about to give a drink to Luffy, Luffy said he doesn't drink. But that's probably because by the time Luffy wasn't really um Luffy wasn't at that age yet though. Because that was like at the first half of One Piece at Logtown. But later he drunk though. I think later he drunk. Like, I think heading into the new world, like around the time skip of One Piece, he started drinking. 
Unless no wait, Whiskey Peak. Whiskey Peak he started drinking, I think. Whiskey Peak. I wonder if Devil Fruit users even get drunk though. Like you ever thought about that? I wonder if Devil Fruit users even get drunk. Cause you know how Luffy has an endless stomach and shit like that? Would they even would they even honestly get drunk though? Like would Devil Fruit users even get drunk? Kimimaru is about to give out. <coughs> With Burning Finger like a complete badass. Domo's not fighting in his mobile suit, is he? Uh, obviously, he's fighting like hand to hand and all that stuff without his mobile suit. Because we all know the man has martial arts and stuff, even without his mobile suit. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was. Also, to answer your question, Char, since you're probably going to ask, Gar plays better now. It's just that his ult is too fast to hit to hit your opponent with. There you go. Oh yeah. They kept asking who's gonna get the most and shit, who's gonna take the most with them and stuff. This shit was crazy. Funny how Luffy finds Blackbeard before Ace does. <laughs> you know how many times Ace gotta pick up though? <laughs> You know something? I've never tasted cherry pie. I'm not lying to you. I've never tasted cherry pie. How does it taste? Because it's no wonder Teach it's no wonder Teach's favorite um meal is actually um favorite snack is actually cherry pie, bro. It's pretty good. Here he goes, he's about to attack them and then stop. Nah, his time's up. That screaming literally made things worse. He attacked and then he stopped. His heart gave out finally. And that's how Kimimaro died. But the one thing about that man that's truly respectable and out of about Kimimaro is that he stayed loyal to Orochimaru until the very end, bro. The Sound Ninja as well, too, but Kimimaro had more of a way better, like he had a, he had more ambition than the other Sound Ninja. Even though he was defective and no longer useful towards Orochimaru because of his condition and stuff like that, he still fought until the bitter end. That's like, 
So much respect. Yup, he was so devoted to his goal in helping Orochimaru. Such a good written character too. Normally you would hate most of Orochimaru's men, but Kimimaru was just different though. He had a kind heart out of the Sound Ninja. And by kind heart, I'm talking, you know, remember with him in Judo and stuff. Um, my bad, not Judo, <clears throat> Jugo. Sorry. I said Judo. I was thinking about Gundam for a sec. <laughs> but Camille should also... Camille... Camille knows hand-to-hand -hand combat, though, as a soldier, especially since he practices karate, too, before he even became a soldier. He should have been able to at least, like, at least probably defend himself a bit. But, of course, Domo there is the one with the true martial arts, though. Sasuke a black eye? You mean the part where his curse mark was showing at this point? Where his eyes was, uh, where his eyes was in curse mark state? I felt Storm could have also given that detail too, but they were too lazy to do that. It makes sense for Dosu to die because of Gar, of course, but the other two were done wrong. Oh, um, Zaku and Keen. Oh, yeah. For them, wasn't Zaku and, um, Zaku was beaten by Shino and he was injured afterwards, and I think. Keen, on the other hand, was also was already defeated and shit. She lost to Shikamaru. And then those two were used as what? What were they were they used again as? I think their bodies were used by Orochimaru, I think. They were kind of done dirty though. Oh, that's right. They were used as sacrifices. They were used as sacrifices for the reanimation jutsu. For the Hokage. For the first and second Hokage. So that's where Orochimaru took their bodies after they were sent to the infirmary. Okay. 
use their bodies in order to reanimate the first and second Hokage. They were done so dirty and Zaku literally just got out of a fight with Shino, bro. He, he straight up just got out of a fight with Shino. And Keen was like, Keen also got out of a fight with Shikamaru after they both lost to them. And like their bodies were just taken afterwards later on, used for the reanimation. I'm like, wow. About to get the transformation cutscene too. They did this cutscene so perfectly. Why couldn't Storm do something like this? Well, technically Storm did, but Ultimate Ninja did it so better. Why didn't Storm grab some of Ultimate Ninja's elements and put them on there? Like, oh my god. I would say he was more of surprised than scared though, but Sasuke did run away a bit. Especially after Naruto popped out the giant hand and tried to chase Sasuke. Remember when Sasuke? I remember when Sasuke reached the reached the edge. Naruto literally grabbed Sasuke with the with the nine tail cloak's hand and pulled him forward and gave him a big ass punch. That shit was crazy. He grabbed him with the nine tails cloak's hand and literally just pulled him and gave him a punch to the face, bro. I get that feeling though. We we there are some characters that I do miss for certain animes though. Even those that don't even get enough screen time these days. I'll just have to sever that bond. Pop out the curse mark. He wasn't supposed to pop out the curse mark at this point. It was more supposed to be uh it was supposed to be like after Naruto gave him the elk. <laughs> Yo, seriously though. Seriously though. Nar Naruto wasn't even supposed to release the Nine Tail Cloak around this time either. That's the funny thing. They both weren't supposed to release their powers. It was supposed to be like it was supposed to be like um before that. But like Naruto was giving Sasuke the work. He started popping out the Taijutsu and shit, bro. He literally started pushing the wind forward with a yell and shit, and he just punched Sasuke, kicked him up, smashed him down in the water. Sasuke gets back up. Naruto pushes Sasuke down the water again after pushing back his fire style and shit, bro. And Naruto literally just hits him back and forth while in the water. Sasuke gets back up, bro. Naruto grabs him. And milliwops him back and forth. Shouldn't he, shouldn't he be using the wind to attack Sasuke? Like, he just using the weapons. What about the wind? You don't got the wind attack? I forgot about that. Hold up. Eh. 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 
get your ass up there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true stuff. Yup. It's definitely true. That scream on the far style, bro, was always the best, bro. Like, oh my god. Naruto used that ramen breath. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. <clears throat> and all the battles we had up until now. Oh yeah, and when we do Ultimate Ninja 4, Ultimate Ninja 4 also shows uh, the same flashback as well. Actually, yeah, it did. Kind of did too, I think. Ultimate Ninja Impact did it too. They showed a flashback to their battle. The Final Valley was done so well here too. In the cutscenes, bro. Like... It's like Storm just no, Storm just doesn't have that impact. Like no. Oh, anyway. Come on, fall on his face where it's raining and shit. It's supposed to be raining around this part. They, they missed the chance. I keep forgetting they missed a the chance on adding the rain, man. Like, the rain. It was supposed to be raining in the final valley, too. Appreciate that, AJ. But I know you fall with all your heart. Sasuke. All right, now for the epilogue. Then I'ma stop for the night. Sorero nindo. Sorero nindo da. Oh yeah, they lost a lot of spark, bro. They lost a lot of spark, and that's why I'm not interested in sparking. Bro, literally when I look at sparking, it was not meant for online play. Like, even if the previous Budokai games were like, for tubular and everything and all that shit, bro, and online and stuff, it was not meant for online play for sparking, bro. It seems so impossible to be met for online play. So I'll come back to Ultimate Ninja 3 for Ultimate Contest and Ultimate Ninja 2 for Ghetto Mark Art. But I'll do those after I finish up 4 and 5 again. So. How long is Ghetto Mark Arc? And how long is Ultimate Contest? I wonder how long it is. Later, Xenon. I remain a fool my entire life. Oh, 
人でも,もっとすげえ術を編み出してそんでサスケは絶対助ける And he made a lot of jutsus on his own. Shippuden would be a long way to go, bro. だが嬉しそうな顔してるじゃないか<笑>確かにあいつは大変な道にいるだがあのまっすぐな瞳がある限りあいつは大丈夫だそうでしょサルトキ先生<笑>さあシャプーデンは about to get crazy in this bitch, bro. Coming back to this game again has actually been pretty good. Two hours to beat the game. That's how long it took. Tara Platt, perfect voice actor for Tamari and perfect for other characters as well, bro. For other anime characters as well. Steve Blum. Steve Blum. Also, Tom from Toonami. Yep, I definitely agree. And Stephanie Shea, voice of Hinata. Yes, sir. Zabuza also voiced by Steve Long. The second Hokage was by Steve Blum, too? Well, I, I did not know that. I mean, hold on. Same voice with Degara? I wonder how he managed to pull that off. Ultimate contest. When next week gets here, I'm not going to do ghetto arc. I'm not going to do the ghetto mark arc nor the ultimate contest until after four and five are um, redone. And then I'll get back to them. All the Naruto games, all the all the best ones and classic ones. Although some games I do regret playing, and I'm talking more of half of the PSP games, and at least one PS2 game. That piano just hits me so well, bro. It hits me a lot. It hits me so much. Oh my god. 
god. I can't. Oh my god, I fucking can't stop crying, bro. That is just perfect. And yes, Uzumaki Chronicles is the one. You guessed it. I, I, I don't fuck with it. I know y'all tried to get me into that game, but I'm sorry. I can't I can't play that. How much it annoyed me, man. Definitely a lot better than one. So I don't have to subject myself to one's hell then. Yeah, the intro is good. That much is that much is for sure. I'm gonna stop here for tonight too, you guys. So So I'll come back to Ultimate Contest. Well, I